What's up, YouTube? I wanted to give you guys an update. Uh, my 90 gallon reef build. Uh, it's been a long way coming. It's been about six months now since I actually brought the tank home. Uh, but I have to say it was well worth the wait. And let's call this part two of my overview. Uh, if you've seen the tank in its beginning stages from the first video, um, you can see it came a long way and I did kind of stick to plan. I did make some variations as far as equipment and you know laying everything out but I think it came out well. Um, I'll walk you guys through what I did and at the end you can let me know what you think. So here we go. I did get my MP40s one on each side. Got the second eductor. So there's two eductors in there now. Um, my Apex display unit is mounted here in the front and if the display is not blinding you um, the temperature is at 77 uh, pH is 8.17 and ORP is uh, 239 um, oh over on the side I have my brute container filled up with fresh RO I did change the sediment filter carbon filter and the DI resin on my four stage uh, 75 gallon a day so I'm getting fresh water um, here I put my Tom's aqua lifter just ran a hose over the top inside and I ran it up here with a drip acclimator kinda just drips it in there nice and slow since I got it coming up it actually drips in there a lot slower which helps reduce uh, salinity swings but and this inside I got uh, 100 pounds of sand I do plan to add in some more I uh, definitely want to get the 4 inch sand bed and, and you can see the MP40's uh, did kind of make a hole in my sand I made my adjustments uh, I'll make another video about that though it's about the WXM module but here's a straight shot of what's going on down here turn the light on for you And to start, I'll start with the skimmer. If I jump around a little bit, guys, uh, forgive me, but I'm going to try to give you everything that I did and why I did it. So I got my water height at 9.5 nine inches. Um, the XS225 uh, Diablo works best at 8.5 and 10.5. So I'd figure getting the water line uh, right in the middle, which is the 9.5, uh, the skimmer would be working at its best. And as you can see, there's nothing in the tank and it's still pulling stuff out. So it's doing its job. Modifications, I stuck a 45 degree elbow with just a little piece of PVC to help it break the water line. And since I pointed it in that direction, it actually keeps the micro bubbles out of my refugium um, because if you if, if I let it pour straight down with a T it actually leaks straight through that hole and then this side looks like a like a soda bottle you know when you shake up a Pepsi or Coca-Cola whatever you drink you can see the carbonation floating to the top and with the refugium light on it looks really ugly so I did that and it pretty much got the micro bubbles to stop my display is uh, bubble free I mean there's just not a single bubble up here and that's awesome um, pH ORP and temperature probe are in this section here this sump has a probe holder so I got it running up here I coiled them together uh, just because uh, the wires it came with were really long and I didn't want to mount them anywhere else where I couldn't you know, remove them from the sump and occasionally give them uh, an RO rinse to get the salt off of them and keep them clean. Uh, put the apex unit up here. Have display plugged into it, the EVA plugged into it. I have an Ethernet, a uh, temperature probe, breakout box, a pH probe, and ORP probe. And you can see that's why I got the wires here. Um, the Ethernet cable runs out through the back and it comes around the side through here it's not the best of cords but it comes into this here now what that is that's a power line 
200 mini made by Netgear. This was like 50 bucks at Walmart, guys. So definitely can get yourself one of these if you're nowhere near a router so where you can hardwire your uh, Apex. You can do that, but definitely if you're doing a firmware update, I uh, got the wire stashed up here. If you're doing a firmware update, I would definitely invest in one of these big long cords to update your Apex when needed. Um, so, from there, the breakout box is coming over here, and currently I'm only using three float switches. I do have another three to set up, but I'm going to wait until I get another one of these brackets, because uh, the guy I ordered them from uh, sells them in sets of two and I need to order myself another set. Um, so like I said, the water line is being kept at 9.5 in this section. And you can see a little bit of a variance between the refugium and the return pump section. And that was because if you don't keep the float switch low enough for your auto top off, and if it's up higher, anywhere where it can uh, be equal to the refugium, then the refugium fills up itself and the return pump section so it'll take your auto top off a little longer to shut off and you don't want to dump too much fresh water into your system at once so I kept this section just a little bit under the refugium so that when the auto top off kicks off or kicks on um, only this section here is being filled and it'll be shut off sooner uh, keeping my salinity more stable and the second float switch, uh, right now I got it programmed as an emergency for the auto top off, so if the second float, sh float switch raises to the top, it will also shut off the auto top off and it shuts off the skimmer. And what worked out really nice for me is the bottom float switch keeps this section at 9.5 and if it fills up to where the second float switch uh, makes contact and closes it'll shut off my skimmer and it'll be just at about this mark which is the 10.5 uh, right before it gets out of its operation range it'll shut off the skimmer so I don't have an, uh, an overflow event um, what else can I do uh, the other float switch is actually up here so I don't have the back of the tank drilled so I won't be able to incorporate the hurry method as far as having an emergency overflow because I do have the lock lines coming from the other hole for my returns. So if you trigger this float switch, if it overfills, you hear the siphon break immediately kick on. And you'll see down here, now my MP40s are also connected or programmed with this float switch so if this float switch is triggered the MP40s will shut off and the skimmer will shut off and you'll see right when it gets to that range that I told you it's gonna shut off one second there you go alrighty so that prevents the sump from overflowing and I got a two minute defer on the return pump so when that float switch up top is triggered only the return pumps gonna shut off and then the rest of the equipment uh, will shut off when that float switch is triggered so that's a great thing that I did uh, because I didn't want to drill the tank I want to keep it the way it is I didn't want too much you know coming in the back I want to keep this nice clean look where there's no pipes or nothing back there. I'm going to clean up the wires a little more. But it definitely helps with the circulation of my exhaust fan. Now my exhaust fan is connected to the temperature probe along with the cooling fan. Now this cooling fan is awesome guys. 10 bucks a fan on Amazon.com. All I did was zip tie these things together, made a little bridge, ran the wires through, connected my black and reds and bought one of these AC to DC adapters and pretty much figured out which one was positive which one was negative and turned them on and I got my variable speeds so everything's great as far as this I mean it's 
so much cheaper than buying a chiller and it works just as good you figure the electricity that this wastes is 10 times less than what another mag pump would waste if you had a second mag pump running the chiller and then the chiller itself needs to be plugged in and maintenance and this is just a way cheaper way to go and as far as I'm concerned it's probably even a better way to go because it's a lot less maintenance um, where else can I go here I put some carbon bags inside it's just a leftover of my marine land carbon um, once I actually get some live rock in this tank I'm gonna switch it over to Chemipure um, so I think I covered everything on this side uh, apex breakout and here I got the WXM module now this thing is badass I got a bio cube 30 feet away from this tank and it's controlling the MP10 on it so I got that to control the two MP40s um, awesome 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 I'm running maybe 15 different settings throughout the day you know anti-sync sync the eco smart modes the random modes and it's just if you look into the modes they're awesome and I got it kinda mapped out to where I'm trying to wake them up gently and then shake them during the afternoon and then put them back to sleep gently so that's an awesome way to I mean it's all up to you how you really want to do it but I made a nice little layout and when I do a video on my apex I'll give that to you guys here's the EB-8 I plan on making some changes so this is not a hundred percent set in stone but this is my skimmer my heater my auto top off my cooling fan, my refugium light, my exhaust fan, or vice versa with these two, I'm not sure, and my return pump. And down here, I added a Philips uh, energy bar, or power bar, or whatever you guys call these, the power strip. I put my two uh, Vortec pumps in here because of the WXM module. Now, there's no need for these to be plugged into your EB8 taking up space because if you have the WXM which is awesome um, you can actually plug these into a separate outlet and they will still be controlled by the Apex so that is awesome I do plan on putting the Radions in here too because the Radions pretty much take care of their self so I'll possibly move my exhaust fan down here and I'll leave myself two open outlets uh, in the future if I want to get myself some dosing pumps which would most likely happen and I'm gonna probably mount them here at the bottom my part A and part B sitting down here. Um, the ballast to my radions are here. Now people would say uh, don't these things create a lot of heat? Uh, create heat? Yes they do. A lot? I don't think so. Uh, because I do have one running on the 46 and I touch the ballast you know at midday when the lights are at its uh, highest intensity and it's more of like a lukewarm. It's not nothing like burning hot so as long as I have this exhaust fan kicking off and on once in a while exchanging the air I shouldn't have too much to worry about as far as heat and moisture being down here and of course you're seeing these my MP40W's mounted here ran them across the top these little sticky things they sent them with uh, really came in handy as far as helping me control the wire mess down here but I did keep everything over this wall except for the heater I got running down, drip looping straight down and then coming back up. The return pump as well and the reason why I got the wires in the front is because if you want to maintenance your sump, uh, I can unscrew the union here and pull the return pump out here and then put it on a towel and clean out this section and the cooling fan uh, in the future if I need to trim my chato, I could just pull the fan off and put it this way on a towel. And the same thing with my refugium light, uh, if you guys know, it's kind of just hanging up there with these clips, so it's easy off and on. It's great. And the skimmer as well, uh, you can't see too well in that corner, but the cord's there, and I can pull the skimmer out and put it here, all without, all without unplugging anything. So it works out good. Uh, I won't have to move too much when it's time to scrub this thing, because these things do get nasty over time. But that's my overview, guys. Um, I don't know, there's a lot more I can talk about, but I want to get something out there for you guys now so you guys can uh, see where I'm standing at. I uh, will be getting some live rock soon. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to aquascape it yet. 
if I'm going to do a wall or an island or how I'm going to do it. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions on making something new and unique, I definitely appreciate it. And these guys over here cannot wait to get into their deluxe condo. They are going to move on up to the east side. I'm loving this team, guys. Um, if you have any questions or comments or anything that I missed that I might not have mentioned, uh, please comment below. And happy reefing.